Gurumal from Malaga. I'm actually on holiday seeing the family. I'm at my uh, in-law's house. This is my grandmother's house uh, in Malaga. So I just wanted to have a, a quick conversation about fear and honesty. So what do I mean by fear? I think fear in the martial arts is when am I afraid to get in conflict? And when somebody says I'm not afraid to be in conflict anymore, um, I think they're full of shit because being in conflict is always scary, especially if you don't see it coming. And when I've heard people that work on doors say, well, you know, on my experience of being on the doors, yeah, you're dealing with, you know, it's, it's almost like prearranged. You know that you've got a certain amount of safety behind you. You know that you're sober, the majority of the people you're dealing with on the door are, are not. You know that there's a different mentality for people who will start fights in a pub and start fights on a doorman. Um, and you're not on your own. So it's a completely different thing. When you're on your own, you know there's a chance that you're going to get hurt. And you could get hurt badly, and depending on your environment, the consequence could be very severe. So when someone says, I don't fear it, they're overconfident. The other fear that I'm talking about is, when I look at Kudo, um, for myself, my personal Kudo, I think to myself, you know, where are the weaker areas of my game? And that's something that I try to be as honest as I can with, uh, in myself and when I'm teaching um, which makes it a lot more exciting for us because me as a teacher I can take people to places to learn from people to make their game more whole now you can't be a five foot something guy teaching six foot something people how to do everything um, and if they don't venture out beyond you then there's going to be a shortfall there too you can say the same thing week in week out for years and they go to someone else, they say it, a light bulb comes on, and it's like they've never heard it before. Super, super frustrating for a coach's point of view, but you know, that's being honest. You've got to be honest that, that whatever way it takes for you to get someone across that line, then you've got to, you've got to use that strategy. So using other people, taking to people, um, and also being in my 40s, going to learn something for the first time is quite hard because you're stuck in your ways you know you've been doing something for a long long time so you have to learn how to learn again uh, which is a really really nice frustrating experience but very nice experience because every single time you do something like that you, you get another ego check that crosses with the honesty strikers fear not being able to grapple grapple grapplers fear less about not being able to strike but there is something there um, but you know since actually going full-time uh, as a martial artist I've learned to realize um, and embrace the fact that we have to as martial artists try and do the best for our students uh, but also do our best for our communities and you can't do that if you try to say that you're the best and no one else comes anywhere near um, I do <laughs> say that at times, obviously when I'm really kind of getting, uh, ramping everybody up. But, you know, really speaking, I know that that's not the truth. We are, we are good at what we do. A few years back, um, I started a group of Tai Chi practitioners. So um, I was taught Shibashi from a, from a very young age, right from the beginning, sort of like 11, because my asthma was, was so bad, I could really get through um, certain physical activities when I was that age um, uh, so I was taught the shibashi to control my breath and it helped me to not only recover quicker but it helped me to deal with things like stitches it got me to get over panic attacks all these sort of things so I've really really had this real close connection with uh, the Tai Chi exercise but as a supplemental part so you know you rarely hear me talking about different meridians or any, any sort of Chinese terminology or things like that because that's not important to me what is important to me is that the body it gets warm the body is more fluid uh, you know the joints are, are getting a chance to heal and recover and your breathing and relaxation so basically it's more uh, for my mental health but I approached that group very differently than I did Gojun Akuda Academy so basically uh, I started practicing and not saying I was teaching it just leading it so I called myself a Tai Chi leader um, and I ended up with so many people following and supporting the group that you know on a on a good day we'll have 
50 something people at Barry Island Beach um, on a bad day and I'm talking bad day wind gales will have still of 10 12 people there one in a practice and I thought to myself how how is this happening so I had to think to myself well maybe it's just the way I go about it I'm trying to encourage people to go along to something but saying it's okay if you don't um, and that's the, the big change you know you have to get involved in something you have to be honest with why you're why you're training why why you're doing it so the message really with the tai chi and all i ever really wanted with that group was to be able to give the benefits of the tai chi to as many people as possible for free if i could if it's about developing the community if it's about benefiting as many people as possible when people come into uh, martial arts they come in for lots of different reasons sometimes they don't even know why they want to do it because they don't know the benefits of of being a martial artist um, but where everybody at, who was teaching and is from different clubs were like oh we're the best we're the best and we can offer the most we can offer the most but really it's it's not even about us it's it's about the the people getting involved and the benefits so kind of referencing the olympics if someone comes in you know i've never had a fight never intend to get in a fight why is it important for them to be you know, uh, the toughest guy on the planet. If, if sport karate gets them fitter, gets them more agile, gives them confidence, and gets them to achieve better things in their life, then fantastic. You know, um, there's a great guy who, whose kids were coming to the club, and he's a martial artist himself, his name's Ben Miles. Um, and he's a good martial artist, really dedicated, really fanatical, really, really gets stuck in. And, and Ben, um, sent me a message to say he's going to start up um, his, his own group to try to combat uh, bullying in school. And I thought that was like, you know, it's, it's kind of, well, it doesn't matter whether he's competition. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, if everybody ends up going there. If the schools are open, if both schools are open, we're reaching a wider community. And Ben's legit. So Ben is is got a lot of experience. He's not a boastful guy, very passionate guy, and that's what you need. You want these kids to be able to understand that they could do this, they could really uh, ch you know, handle themselves in a fight if they had to, you know, and get these kids fitter. So he's gone bullying, fitness, winner. So as far as I'm concerned, um, Ben's group's called Grapple Box, and he will continue uh, to try to do that. So good, good stuff, Ben, really, really good stuff. So, and then the other groups in the area, uh, you know, I'm not saying they're doing the same thing, but we had, we had a, a referral for a female student um, from the Bennett brothers. Okay, so Sp uh, Spencer and Lee Bennett, um, in the past, with this, all these groups setting up and ego involved and all the rest of it, and put my hand up, I was like, if we're better than them, they're probably saying the same thing. Um, but we've got older, we're more mature, and we can see the benefits of more people doing martial arts. So it doesn't mean that you've got to be seeing each other all the time and, or even entered in the same sort of competition route if you're in the sports way. It's just really talking positive about other people and not wanting to see people fail because I would be absolutely gutted even though um, I don't sit predominantly in karate anymore. Um, you know, I still feel a very strong connection to it and therefore very proud of my roots uh, within karate. So I want to see karate still be around. I want to see it evolve. I want to see it uh, literally become what I used to think of karate in the, in the 90s, you know, it was just like these people were gods, you know, they could just float across the mat and really drop some serious hard shots and you t a total belief. And I'm going to put a little clip in here. Um, someone I met through COVID, I don't know him, it's been via message and stuff, but Anthony Pendlebury um, in Chester, uh, it, there's this clip that he's got of uh, him, I would say it would be Ashley Baroy, but it's not Ashley Baroy, he just literally just hacks the leg, perfect timing, ups him up in the air, he's there in like a Kibodachi, drops a, a shot on his head, you know, um, that comp and raises his arm like this, and it's just complete belief, and that's what Cry was all about, was that waiting for the right timing, absolutely nail the shot, put them down on the floor, hit them so they don't get back up again. Now, anybody can argue with me, that Anthony in this clip couldn't have dropped someone, put them down and left them there, ready for whoever comes running at him next, then you're taught in absolute bollocks. Karate was always very much a don't go to the floor because the lack of skill there. Um, you know, I'm not saying that there's, there's no techniques in karate to go to, you know, defend yourself on the ground, but there's very limited stuff. And, you know, that would be the next thing that gets asked quite a lot. How much do I 
think um, you know Karate has techniques on the ground, um, and I would say that you know we, we clutch the straws. Um, everybody's got uh, principles you can apply on the ground within Karate, um, but realistically, if you are going to learn to be good on the ground, then um, and solely the ground, then you know why practice Karate? Go to Jiu Jitsu. You know, uh, judo practitioners are going to jiu-jitsu for exactly the same reason, and they go to the ground. Um, you know, in judo, you learn to pin well, which I think is a really good skill um, for, for all grappling, standing grappling. Uh, and when you're on the ground, there's a number of things that you've got to uh, pay attention. But then again, it's like how far you want to go with it, um, because it'll get to a stage where... Um, jiu-jitsu could become sports jiu-jitsu and it becomes specific. I've got to give another shout out for that actually. It's Mark Spenner Spencer who's uh, got a very successful uh, MMA gym in Bradford and now has become a branch of Kudo. Um, you know, SBG as a group, um, he's very open-minded uh, and you can see why he was, you know, a good fighter and why he man and still manages to produce really good fighters because he's He's understood that there's limitations to, to each art and he understands how to build individuals. So that's a good point to end it on. Number one, which martial arts better? They all are. You know, which clubs are better? Which, better, which clubs are better for you? And you've just got to find the club that fits with you. Um, I might not like the way some people do things or they might not like how I do mine. But, you know, this is me. I'm being honest about it. I don't fear that someone comes into our dojo and tells us we're doing things wrong because we stick to what we're good at and uh, we try and move people other places if we're not and it's providing you're doing that um, you're doing the right thing you're on the right path it's a martial journey we all got that in common so the last little uh, comment that I'll use or uh, plug I'll use is Chris Hansen I haven't said anything about Chris in a long time but it's what Chris is trying to do he's unifying not just karate as karate unity He's trying to unite as many martial arts as possible. And believe me, that's the toughest job in the world. So uh, anyway, uh, if you're interested in Kudo and you like what we're doing, thanks for all the subscribers. We are almost near that thousand mark. I'm having a great time over here in Spain. By the way, they won't let me train because they're all scared of the COVID in the UK. <laughs> so I'll carry on with being uh, the COVID leper in Malaga and you carry on being a great person in your life. See you soon. Osh.